Buddy Lance Russell and Dave Brown right along ringside. And we're ready to go. Another big day championship wrestling. I have my mic cord going yeah, down there. Cool. <laughs> we're tugging away. Dave, let's get it on. All Boy, right. We got a big one. Well, I tell you, we do. We're going to have Rick Flair here today on championship wrestling. Rick Flair scheduled to go against Rick McCord. And then we've got the invaders scheduled against Dutch Mantel in another single match. That should be a good one. Then, expiration of time match today. Tag team action. In this one, it'll be Sweet Brown Sugar teamed with Carl Fergie. That's what it says right, right there. Brown, Sweet Brown Sugar, Sugar and, and Carl, Carl Fergie, Fergie I against, <laughs> no, I don't either, against <laughs> Terry Taylor and Bobby Fulton. Should be some action there in that oh, expiration oh, of time match. You what, mm, we're looking forward to all of it, as a matter of fact. And, of course, the momentous occasion that brings the NWA World Heavyweight Champ in here Absolutely. is that he is here to sign a contract for a title match. It'll be coming up in the future in the area, and we're looking forward to all of the festivities and everything else. So why don't we get it underway, and we'll be back and ready to go with the opening bout and opening ceremonies for you in just one moment. <laughs> Okay, before we get in the ring for our first bout, we do have Ric Flair, who will be wrestling today, in addition to the fact uh, another outstanding uh, ceremony that will be taking place. Eddie Marlin, promoter, is out here with us. And here he comes right now, the NWA World Heavyweight Champ. His first appearance on our championship wrestling, uh, Ric Flair. Rick, we're delighted to have you here today. And we really appreciate uh, your not only being here for the contract signing, which is a rather momentous occasion for this section of the country, but also uh, agreeing to wrestle here today. Well, hey, I want to admit to you, and I want to apologize to a lot of people out there, I've had the wrong impression of Memphis. You know, I got off my jet today, and they had a real big airport here. And I even saw a couple Cadillacs on the highway as I came over here to the TV station. And you, contrary to my beliefs, from what I'd heard, are a real literate TV announcer, and Memphis really is showing me a lot more class than I was led to believe. And Mr. Marlin here obviously promotes one of the finest wrestling promotions I've ever seen anywhere in the country, and it's a pleasure for Ric Flair, the world champion, to be right here in Memphis, and I'm going to do all I can to make this promotion as successful as any promotion that I take part in. Well, I want to say on behalf of everybody in the area that, of course, everybody knows the uh, tremendous uh, background and the what led up to being the world heavyweight champion, winning the title from Dusty Rhodes and all. Rick, we're delighted to have you here today. And again, we appreciate the fact that you are and have agreed to uh, wrestle here on our championship wrestling. And I think, uh, you know, after being in big cities like Chicago and New York and Kansas City and Atlanta, you know, a person like myself, who obviously is a top shelf individual, is led to believe that Memphis was nothing but rednecks and low class people. And I'm really amazed. And Memphis has shown me a lot. And because, as you mentioned earlier, I'm going to wrestle on this program out of the goodness of my heart. As I said, I'll do anything I can to upgrade and to help professional wrestling. I'm going to strip myself of this. $500 sport coat. I'm going to slide out all this gold, and I'm going to show the people right here in Memphis just exactly what a real world champion looks like. I know they're going to enjoy it just as much as I enjoy showing them. Well, I, uh, you mentioned something there, and, and we'll get into this important thing. I do want to say that that has got to be one of the most stunning watches I've ever seen, this beautiful gold watch that Rick is wearing. And that's entirely aside the point, but uh, I got to bring it up because it is unique. Eddie, here is uh, the big thing one. about Ric Flair is unique. And the more you're around Ric Flair, this isn't custom made, but if I keep coming in out of Memphis with the money that'll follow me, maybe you can afford a custom made suit. <laughs> but as you'll see, Mr. Marlin, big time promoter that you are, I'm going to agree to wrestle the so Southern Heavyweight Champion, whoever he may be, in the upcoming future. Put the contract down here, my man. We'll make Memphis a big time wrestling community. How's that? Uh, golly, I'll tell you one thing. We're looking forward to this one and the signature goes down and the agreement on this, uh, Eddie, is as I understand it, that Rick will wrestle the Southern Heavyweight Champ in the area. Okay, well we are really looking forward to that and uh, while the date specifically has not been set, 
It will be filled in whenever your schedule is, uh, is arranged where you can come in. We're going to be looking forward to that, too. I'll be back shortly. Ladies and gentlemen, prepare yourself because the magnificent one is going to show you why he wears the 10 pounds of gold that makes him the greatest professional wrestler alive today. Well, there he is, and we'll be seeing him a little bit later in his tights. There's no question about it that uh, confidence is certainly a part of being a champion, and uh, as you can obviously see, Ric Flair has all the confidence in the world, and we will be seeing him in action today. We thought possibly that the only thing that we were going to be able to do was to introduce our championship wrestling fans to him and uh, have him here for the contract signing. The name is on the contract, and we'll be announcing today. Well, I see when the camera is on, the mic is open. Who is going to take the opportunity to be here? But the president of the first family of professional wrestling, Ooh. Jimmy Hart. You know, I just realized something, that I am the man in professional wrestling that makes things happen. Am I right, baby? Am I right? Listen to that, man. Look, cards and letters from all over the world. Why? For Jimmy Hart. For Jimmy Hart, man. I've been born again, baby. Born again. I feel so good today. I feel fantastic. But, you know, let me tell you something right now. There is a little something on my mind today. You know, I gave Jerry Lawler the opportunity of a lifetime to join the first family of professional wrestling. Mm -hmm. The greatest thing happening in professional wrestling. But what did he do? He thumbed his nose up at Jimmy Hart. He doesn't need Jimmy Hart anymore. He knows, you know, I know, and most of all, the people know that I won that match the other night for Jerry, the King Lawler. I won. He couldn't even come close to beating Kamala and James Dillon without Jimmy Hart. But that's okay, Lawler, because what goes around comes around, my friend, because I promise you this, baby, I won that match for you. I gave you that belt, and I'll be the one to take that belt away from you. Because, you see, I have two very, very special surprises. One will revolutionize professional wrestling history when I make that announcement. But that's going to come a little later. But my new surprise, it. not today, Russell, not today, but my new surprise right now, my biggest surprise is I have a new member in the first family of professional wrestling, a man that has been abused and has been used all of his life. Carl Fergie, come here, Carl. Well, I want to ask here. you about this because I saw it and I could not believe, I thought it was wrong when they said uh, Carl Fergie and Sweet Brown Sugar. Well, I knew you'd probably think it was wrong, but I'm going to tell you what, it's not, it's right, baby. This man has been abused and used by Jerry Lawler all of his life. You know, everybody knows that he is the cousin to the king, and I use the king very, very loosely, and the cousin to Wayne Ferris, who at one time was in the first family. But you see, this man won a very important match last week, and that was a battle of eight men that he had the opportunity to have a Southern Heavyweight Championship match. And I promise you this, Carl Fergie, right now, baby, you will be my new Southern Heavyweight Champion when that moment comes in your lifetime. Because you see, Jerry the King Lawler, your cousin, has put you on the back burner. He is so jealous of you and everybody in your family, but this man right here is the future, just like Sugar and Eaton's the future. So that's all I've got to say, baby. A few surprises here and there, huh? Boy, I'll say a few, few baby. surprises, a few surprises in there. Carl Fergie, baby. Carl Fergie, who, uh is the newest member of the first family, and that kind of was a stunning surprise to us. Jimmy Hart makes it official out here and clears it up. He has joined the first family, and we'll be seeing him a little bit later with Sweet Brown Sugar as his partner in today's championship wrestling. We are going to take some time out, come back here, and by golly, we're going to be interested in seeing the world heavyweight champ Ric Flair in action right after we take time out for this. Golly, this is special occasion today. We had the world's heavyweight champion in here, Ric Flair, and now we've got the southern heavyweight champ, Jerry the King Lawler, who's got that belt around that waist. Yes, Lance, and it feels very, very good to hear you call me that again. You know, I told you it was a big, uh, the biggest match of my career last week, and I was fortunate enough to come out the new southern heavyweight champion. Now, I want to just come out here for a second for two reasons. First of all, to clear up all of this, uh, you know, I was thought I was going to have to send you a shovel out here because it was getting pretty deep a few seconds ago with Hart out here saying that he won the belt for me. And now he's, I see he's even got my cousin Carl out here and he's probably got his head a little in the, going in the wrong direction. But it will only take me a few minutes to straighten that young man out. And as far as Hart 
as far as Hart thinking that he ever won anything in his life, he's sadly mistaken, Lance. I beat the man with very, very little help from Jimmy Hart, I might add. He was there as a diversion, mm -hmm. but I want to make this clear. You know, I had people telling me all along that, King, are you going in the first family? Are you teaming back up with Hart? Well, let me assure you that nothing was ever further from my mind because, you see, I used Hart. I made a fool out of Hart. I used him. I won my Southern heavyweight title back. I'm the champion, and Hart's still running around the little, same little clown that he ever was. If he ever thought for one minute that uh, I would take him back, the only way I told him that I would take him back as my manager was if he carried all my suitcases, did all my arrangements, and was just a general flunky, exactly like he was before when I first had him. That would be the only way. He expected me, Lance, to join the first family and be a, some first lieutenant or something like that. So I straightened him out real quick on that. Now, Hart, if you've got any other ideas about anything you ever want to do, business he wants to conduct with me this is as close as you're going to get to me from now on Hart. i want you to understand that buddy just get within range and i'm going to put this right upside your head but enough about Hart, lance okay. i want to you're right this is an exciting day you know i got here early i was supposed to wrestle i see you know you, they don't have my name on the list no it's, it's not a they had me down against pat hutchison now you and i know you could beat pat hutchison couldn't you lance hey come on so i got dressed and uh, Eddie Marlin says, you're wrestling Pat Hutchison? I said, scratch me off the list, Eddie. It's no use me even wasting my time. But I would like, before I leave today, I would like to have the opportunity to uh, shake hands with Ric Flair, the world heavyweight champion. If, you haven't uh, I met see that he's, uh, Rick before? Oh, I, I just said I would like to shake hands with Ric oh, Flair. Well, I see. Uh, he's supposed to wrestle now. If you could go ahead and... Uh, Ring the uh, bell. Maybe yeah. I could just stay out here. And, you okay. Know, uh, l let me get around here, and we'll tap the bell, and we'll get uh, the champion out here. Because he is, as a matter of fact, coming up in the next bout. He's going against young Rick McCord, and uh, it'll be he our is, first look at him. He's here. obviously great, isn't he? I mean, you know, uh, he sounded like he's uh, full of confidence. Uh, he is full of confidence. He is the question about it. And yeah. there he is, right here. Here he comes. The NWA World Heavyweight Champion, Ric Flair. Rick, can we get you uh, before Rick. you? Rick, Rick, can I get you to come over here just a moment? Do you uh, mind if I just, I just wanted to talk to you for just a second, wish you well on your match, shake hands, and this kind of thing. If you don't mind? Rick, uh, Plenty of time for that. Plenty of time for that. Okay, and I think uh, obviously uh, these two gentlemen uh, know each other. The Southern just, Heavyweight Champion Jerry Lawler and Ric Flair, the World Heavyweight Champion. Welcome, welcome you what to the this area. What was the name? Yeah. <laughs> Come on. You know, you know me as well as you know. Well, you don't know Lance, but you know we've wrestled on a lot of cards in Florida just a couple of weeks ago. Jerry Lawler, you know that. But, I mean, you know, I understand. I, I understand completely. Look, he's got that little devilish smile there. I know Rick very well. I agreed to come to Memphis, Tennessee because the world champion should give everyone an opportunity to see big time professional wrestling at its best. But Jerry Lawler, <laughs> I believe they call him the king over here in Memphis, is not going to take up any time of the world champion. Now you see there's a lot of women in this audience over there that are dying for me to slide out of the $7,000 robe. And Mr. Lawler, when I get through with, uh, what's his name? Rick McCord. When I get through with Mr. McCord, I'll be back. How's well, that let Well, let me say this. Now, it's, it's, it's all, you know, it's plain to see that you are here for one reason, and that is to impress all of these pretty women that you see sitting in the audience, and there are some pretty ones. You know, I heard you say uh, that you had heard a lot about this area, about you know, that maybe it's all rednecks and uh, that kind of thing down here, but I think you can see from the people here that uh, you were misinformed. And you want to, being the world champion that you are, the great, undoubtedly, as you said earlier, the greatest wrestler in the world today. Is that right? Well, okay, what you need to do here... I couldn't have said that better myself. Okay, Thank you fine. Me. Oh, hey, you won't get any arguments from me. You know, what you want to do is look as good as possible. This is the first time that you've been on this TV in this That's area. Right. You want to impress these people. You want to look as good as possible today in front of these thousands of people that are watching. Now, I'm going to tell you something about Rick McCord. Now, this is, I like Rick McCord, and this is no offense to Rick at all, but Rick is a young wrestler. He's fairly inexperienced, and I think it's safe to say that Rick has never won a match here on this television. Is that, am I correct? 
I don't remember it if he did. I'm not saying that as a knock to, uh, to Rick. I'm saying it because the man is inexperienced. Now, were a man of your caliber to go in the ring there, you being the world heavyweight champion, were you to go in there and beat Ric Flair or would, and beat Rick McCord, you, you really aren't going to impress anybody. I mean, the, when you step in the ring, there you wouldn't be able to walk in that audience and get one person to say that that man has a chance against you. You know, you and I just aren't communicating on the same level. You see, these people are here. I could go in there and wrestle a broom. They're here to see Ric Flair. Now, I'm telling you, I gave Memphis a little credit. This sh Memphis has shown me a little bit more than I thought ever possible in the city of Memphis, Tennessee. But you don't seem to understand these people over here have come to see me against anybody. It could be you. It could be, uh, uh, who, who the little guy with the dark hair? What's his name? What do they call him? Bill Dundee. Oh, B Bill Dundee. It could be anybody. Ric Flair, the greatest. Ric Flair, the legend. Ric Flair, your world champion, your world champion, and all these people out here, world champion. So it makes no difference. You want me to wrestle somebody else? Give me somebody else. Competition is all secondary next to Ric Flair. Wow. Rick, excuse me, just one more second. You just said the magic words there. If you, you are the world heavyweight champion, that is, there's no doubt in anybody's mind. You wear the gold, you're the greatest wrestler in the world today. So like you said, it shouldn't matter who you wrestle. Nobody's in your caliber, right? Sure. Well, why don't we let Rick go on back to the dressing room, and I had a match scheduled very similar to this man right here. If you don't mind, why don't you and I go in the ring? Now listen, like I said, no, wait. Uh, uh, listen, wait a minute, Rick. I think it's the folks obvious, like that. It's obvious to you that even I'm not in your caliber. Nobody in this area is in your caliber. So when you beat me, you're going to impress these people. They will be impressed when you beat Jerry Lawler right in that ring. Right there. You want to wrestle the world champion? Don't you think anybody wants to wrestle the world champion? Hey. It's an honor for me, Rick. I would love to wrestle. It would be What, what kind of a time limit do we have in these matches? Uh, ten minutes. One ball, ten minutes. Uh, time limit. You want ten minutes of my time? I would love it. Is that all right with you? Non-title. Get in the ring, brother. Uh, wait, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Rick Flair has said he will go on a non-title, one fall, ten minute time limit bout. Let me ask you one more thing. I know, I realize I'm taking a lot of your time here and it's very valuable, precious time, but since, since I or uh, Rick McCord up there, nobody in this area is in the same caliber of wrestler as you, and that's true because you are the one and only world champion, since we've only got 10 minutes, why don't we really make this interesting? Why don't we make everybody out there at home excited, all of these people really excited, make this the most interesting and exciting show that there's ever been on wrestling, and put the world title up for just the 10 minutes. No big deal. You probably beat me in 30 seconds. You wouldn't be You're the world champion. Little, you wouldn't be putting a little of that country jive on me now, would you? No, no. You know, Lance, would I jive the world, the world, the world, world champion? The world champion never puts his title on TV. Number one, I don't make $500,000 a year, and I don't fly around in a big jet defending that title on local TV programs, you understand? I but I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Because you're a big deal around here, because I even saw you on TV the other night. Boy, you were a real big deal the other night. Tell you what I'm going to do for you, what I'm going to do for you, and I'm going to do for Memphis, because I think it's long overdue. You get in that ring, the belt will be on the line, and I'm going to pull you through your hoop, Daddy. Mm, well, you heard it right there. Ric Flair said For he would put minutes. the title on the line. For 10 minutes, the World Heavyweight Championship is at stake in this ring, right? That's what the man said. I didn't know you could have a 10-minute uh, championship match. But Ric Flair has... Uh, so Rick McCord steps out. Okay, Dave, how about the official entry? Whoa, how about this? All right. Introducing the challenger from Memphis, Tennessee at 228 pounds, Jerry the King Lawler, and the champion from Minneapolis, Minnesota, 240 pounds, Rick Flair. This is a world championship match, one fall, 10-minute time limit, 
Jerry Calhoun, the referee. Well, I'll tell you, Davey, we have often said that on championship wrestling where the uh, unexpected can be expected, it happened today. Okay, we'll get it clear. One more comment uh, from Rick before we get it underway here. Yeah, Rick. Never let it be said that the world champion is not a fair man. Lawler's a big deal in this part of the country. He's a big deal in professional wrestling. But you see, his image was all Jerry Lawler because he never was in the ring with Ric Flair. So if Mr. Lawler wants to step out of this ring and walk back there before I embarrass him and before, really, he has to walk out of this television studio with his head between his legs, I'm going to give him an opportunity to do it. So why don't you make that clear to the audience and make that clear to Lawler. If you want, it's the easy way out, brother. Just get out of the ring and I'll forget it. No, let's not forget it, please. 10 minutes, world champion. You really want 10 minutes with a world champion? Well, you want 10 minutes with Ric Flair? Daddy, you got it. Don't let Gus get on this, brother. Oh, no. We got it. Well, by golly, I'll tell you, I take my hat off to the champion in this respect. He didn't back up one minute. And, of course, neither did the king. Bell Simon, David, here we go. Oh, world title match. NWA World Championship belt. On the desk in front of us here, it is at stake in a 10-minute time limit match as Lawler challenges Ric Flair. Ric takes Lawler down, face first, moves around, and Lawler squeezes out of it as Flair is right back over to the rope. Get up back. Come on, I'll get his back. Side headlock, Flair moves around behind, takes that arm in a uh, hammer position, but nice reversal from Lawler. Lance Russell and Dave Brown right at ringside with an unexpected uh, bout today and an extreme pleasure of having an NWA World Heavyweight Championship match. One fall, 10 minutes. I said I never heard of a 10-minute championship match, but if Flair puts the uh, belt on the line, that's good enough for me. And I can tell you this, that it's sure good enough for Lawler. Flair moves in, bangs him with that shoulder, takes it around and under. And Lawler and a reversal. Well, he didn't beat him in 30 seconds. No, that's true. He, uh... He was unable to do that. Of course, he never uh, he never said he would. Lawler said he probably yeah, could, yeah. but uh, Lawler and Flair, a couple of well-matched wrestlers there. All right. I wonder if uh, I wonder if uh, Rick Flair has seen Jerry Lawler wrestle much. He said he'd seen him on TV before. He had heard, oh, Flair. Back on the ropes and shoves Lawler back away. When I get on the ropes, you move on. I get back in the center of the ring. Jerry Lawler with the headlock on the world champion, Ric Flair. Double wrist lock up top, and they're battling it, and Flair. The Lawler now coming back straight up. And he takes it into a standing side headlock. Flair gave it his best shot in trying to power his way out of it, but Lawler right with him every step of the way. Shoulders down. Lawler with the shoulders down briefly. Had no trouble in kicking back over after Flair had rolled him up. Lawler hanging on to that headlock. 
long as it's working, he can wear Flair down. That Flair rolls the shoulders down again. Down to one. Lawler can make Ric Flair use a lot of energy in trying to work his way out of this hole. He fires Lawler into the rope. Lawler not coming off of there. Flair lets him go by. Lawler ducks under. Reversal by Lawler. He's got Mr. Flair's uh, dander up a little bit, David. Believe you're right. All right, we've got about, uh, let's see, four minutes left. Four minutes left. Past the halfway mark, we've got about four minutes in time left to go, and Lawler and Flair. So uh, that becomes a very important item. Dave. Especially now, uh, yeah, since we're past halfway mark. <laughs> Flair blisters him with a chop. <laughs> He's banging away on the king now. Ooh. He dropped down with the lower part of the leg. The referee said, legal one, two, and Lawler kicked out of it. Lawler slipped the suplex. He's around behind on a sleeper with Flair. We have less than three minutes left in the time limit. the momentum forward and wanged into the ropes. Lawler went sliding right off and really hit his head on that floor. Outside the ring now, Flair going after Lawler on our studio floor. And we're down to the two minute mark about on the uh, on the action. Now, two minutes to go, two minutes on the time limit. Lawler whipped in, big elbow. The referee Jerry Calhoun reminding Flair about the power driver, Dave, yeah. I believe. You're right, looks like that's what he was going and for. One, two, two, and Lawler again. Thought he had him that time. He, did too. he was close, but Lawler able to break it just before the three count fell. A little under a minute and a half to go. About a minute and a half. Proud partisan for Lawler, obviously. Trying to cheer him on and get him going, but Flair is starting to really put the steam on him. Another two count. One minute. One minute. 60 seconds to go. And Lawler banged down hard as Flair again drops straight down. Mashing that forehead. The referee didn't call it. He looked awfully close to a knee in the forehead. Okay, baby, now we go to school. Suplex, Flair straight up in the air, and Lawler crushed down on that mat at the 30-second mark. We've got 30 seconds to go. He's going for a figure four leg lock. He's got Lawler in it. And our time is winding down. That's it. Ten-minute time limit is up. That's all. So the figure four leg lock is going to go for naught, and the bout is going to end up in a draw, Dave. As Flair will not let go. He gave up, didn't he? And the bout, which was an unexpected one for us here, to see the King and Ric Flair going at it. But the 10-minute time limit, which was, a, no, he didn't give up on it. The time limit ran out. The 
The 10 minute time limit ran out on it. Okay. And it is now, a draw. It, we played by your rules. Now we play by mine. Five more minutes. Five more. Hey, no questions. The world champion wants five more minutes. If the world champion wants, the world champion gets. Uh, I guess we have five more minutes. Huh? Referee said he doesn't know. Okay, well, we're off and running on it. Because Flair going after Lawler. This is an extended uh, portion. A, another match getting underway as Ric Flair says, I want five more minutes. And Flair pounding on Lawler. Lawler taking those shots from Ric Flair. He's driven back into the corner in the King. Right now, being brutalized, look out. There's that Lawler move, and he nails Flair. Lawler knuckling Ric Flair in this extra five minutes as Flair holding on, Dave. Post into the monitor and all the floor and Flair slam. Look at Lawler go to town. Boom. Flair taking a breather out here, getting out of the ring. After Lawler, it's been all Lawler in this uh, second five minutes. Flair grabs his uh, his belt. Heads out of here. Rick Flair after being. All are telling referee Jerry Calhoun that he left, count him out of it. And Jerry is right, he did pick up his belt up. and left. He's counted out. I'm the world heavyweight champion. Right? Tell you, I just really don't know. I he Jerry. left the ring. He's counted out. I'm the champion. I I don't know. Of course, that is nothing new. I have known what's happened here since uh, we all got started in this. Rick Flair came out here. I, I tell you what, we're gonna have to. I'm do. the champion. That's what we gotta do. Jerry, I don't know, but get the belt. I gotta take a break, and maybe we'll find out. Listen, see if you can uh, get Eddie Marlin for me during this break. And let me see if we can get this thing straightened out. We're going to take a break, ladies and gentlemen. And we'll be back and try to get this thing straightened out. Yeah, he did walk out. So let's take a break, right? Yeah. Is, uh, yeah, Eddie, we've got to get this uh, cleared up on the thing because Flair picked up the belt and left in here, and uh, it would seem to me that that would make Lawler the uh, world heavyweight champion. Well, it's real confusing to everybody except Rick Flair. I went back and talked to him, and he said, what's the big deal? He said, show me the contract for today's title match, and I'll produce the belt. So without his word, it wasn't a title match. So he said we had to have a contract. We didn't have a contract. He hey, is right here. Just a minute, brother. Produce a contract. Well, Show me a contract that said I wrestled for the world championship. Show it to me. You're a big deal in this town. You're a big man. Show me a contract. I don't have a contract. You know why it doesn't exist? You think you're talking to some country hick like this town's made out of? You're talking to the world champion, we brother. took you for your word. Yes, well, I'll tell you what. Take me for this, brother. You will never see the day that I wrestled Jerry Lawler. And you know why? I'll tell you why. Don't crowd me. Get in here, big man. This seems to be the only man in the whole town that I can look in the eye and believe. You understand what I'm telling you? I hear what you're saying. He's like me. He likes nice clothes. He likes a good laugh. He likes the soft touch of a pretty woman. 
and he likes money. So let me show you something, brother. Don't you walk away either. I don't care if you're a multi-millionaire, Eddie Marlin. I'm a multi-millionaire, too. Just a minute, partner. I presume, then, that officially means that the title did not change hands. It was no title match. Who's wasting it around? You know damn well it didn't change hands. Okay. It's on the way to the world champion, All brother. Right. Well, you you know, I want to tell you something. I came out here out of the goodness of my heart. I flew my little jet in here out of the goodness of my heart. And you country bumpkins, you redneck, tried to put something over on Mr. Cool. No way, Daddy. Not today, anyway. What today? Blair. What is happening here? We, uh... Hey. Don't you worry. When I turn around, I'll tell you what's happening. Well, in case you just joined us, this is the world heavyweight champ, uh, Rick Flair, who uh, has called this meeting uh, with Jimmy Hart out here. Now, all right. My personal check. And, brother, if you don't think it's as good as gold, call anywhere in the country. Anywhere. I got more money and more banks around the United States than any man alive. $10,000. You know what this is for? Because I want you to bring me the blood and the sweat and the guts of Jerry Lawler. And you, for trying to intimidate me, for trying to pull something off, are going to have to watch the slow destruction of your big time hero. You understand what I'm telling you? I don't care if you're a multi-millionaire. You don't. Yeah, well, take this and take this. It's my word. $10,000, brother. I'll sign the check the day you deliver to me a piece of Jerry Lawler. And I don't care whether you wrap it up, whether you put it in a box. I don't care. I want to hear that Lawler's got a broken leg. I want to hear he's got a broken arm. I want to hear he's got a broken neck. I want to hear Jerry Lawler is no longer a professional wrestler. And I'll tell you what, Daddy, because you're the man you are, that 10000 is just openers. Now you, Mr. Russell, I complimented you. I said you were a real man. Well, I'm gonna tell you something. I can't help but believe deep down inside you didn't have something to do with this. And because you think Jerry Lawler's a big deal, you're gonna have the privilege of watching this too. Because we're gonna bring in men from all over the world. And so keep your mouth shut, brother, when I'm talking. Uh, and Jerry Lawler, if you're out there, remember this, brother, you are going to belong to me as a present from this man right here. Let me say one thing, baby. For $10,000, he might not even be alive the time you get back, baby. For 10 grand, for 10 grand, woo! Yeah, you came to the right one when you went to heart. That's for a fact. Let me tell you something. What comes out of my mouth is as good as gold. Put it in the bank. What I can't go out and get myself, I buy. And I'm buying Jerry Lawler's hide. I'm going to be very polite. Lawler, laugh, joke about this, but remember one thing. You've never come up against Ric Flair. And what I want, I get. You remember it, and you remind these people in Memphis, Tennessee, there's only one big daddy, and it's Ric Flair. Okay, well, we heard it from the... Uh from the world's champion in a rather unchampionship like gesture getting Jimmy Hart out of here. He, in fact, did give him a check for $10,000. It's not signed, and he said he will sign it at such appropriate time as he has the evidence that Lawler is not, uh, not wrestling uh, anymore. Uh, we've got more action coming up in the ring, and we're going to get right to it. Thing. I'm not going to take up a lot of time, but I've been sitting in the back and I have been steaming, brother, because all I've been hearing is Ric Flair and Jimmy Hart and Lawler and Dundee and all this, and they got their own, their own thing going. But let me say one thing. Belts and titles mean a lot. The Southern belt means a lot, and the, and the Middle America belt means a, means a great deal. 
Now, I'm going to stand out here today in front of 350,000 people, but the man I want to talk to right now is a man who owns that Middle America belt, and that's the belt I'm after, Bill Dundee. And I want him to come out here, and I want him just to answer a few questions. It's all I want him to do. Now, I don't want Eddie Marlin. I don't want to talk to Eddie Marlin. I want to talk to Dundee, because Dundee is the man who has the Middle America belt. And how many weeks did I come out here and challenge Bobby Eaton for a match? How many weeks? Well, well, a lot of weeks, yeah, right? you did, right. A lot of weeks I've challenged him. And now, here comes Bill, and I want to, uh, now, no trouble, okay? I just want to ask him a few questions. Bill, right here, baby. I just want to ask you okay, a few questions. Up. Now, listen. Hey, wait a minute. You wait a minute. Bill, I want to ask you one thing, brother. You're the Mid-American champion. Everybody knows that, right? Yeah. I want to ask you what happened. Bill, what? What happened? No, okay, I had to wrestle Steve Kern, right? Right. Okay, in my, in my opinion, I shouldn't have had to wrestle him anyway, anyway because I'm the number one contender. Hey, I right or not? No, Eddie, wait a minute. Marlin no, wait a minute. I, me. Okay, we're supposed to have a match. And how many weeks did I come out here and challenge Bobby Eaton for a match? Yep. And you know why you won in the first place? Okay, I came out here. Did I or did I not come out here on TV and help you? Did I, wait a minute, did I or did I not sit Jimmy Hart down in his chair so you can beat Bobby Eaton? Well, I'd have done the same for you. You've been on the same day. No, you never no, asked me minute, to Wait a minute now. Yeah, There's you, no okay, big question. Okay. You kept Hart's head and I beat Bobby Eaton. Fair okay, square, you beat, okay. but everybody knows you can beat Bobby Eaton straight up. It was Jimmy Hart that you got to worry about. I neutralized Jimmy Hart. And right, you I didn't win the belt. You didn't win the belt. We oh. won the belt. Okay. We won the belt. I helped you win the belt. So actually, what, what I am, I'm a co-holder of that Middle America belt. Well, I'll tell you what I'll do with you, Dutchman. If you think you own the belt, you wear the belt a week, and I'll wear it a week, hey, okay? Hey, don't no, get, hey, no, no. Don't get, hey, sm don't get smart. Don't, don't get smart. Trouble, hey, All I want to say, I want to say one thing. I want a match, and I'm not getting a match. I'm not getting You it. never beat Steve Kern, the man said. Hey, I beat win. Steve Kern. Hey, it was a Did stupid he referee. There's that... anybody there that he beat Steve Kern. Hey, were you at ringside? Were you the referee? Well, I stood back and watched it. They, they sent everybody in, pulled you apart. The guy never held nobody's hand up. No, he didn't now, hold anybody's hand up. Why don't you put the belt up against me, Dundee? Now, I've come out here three or four weeks in a row. Now, what I got to wait? For you to lose the belt or retire the water? I'm, I don't like being in first matches, and I'm not going to be in first matches because I'm after that belt. Okay, Rick, Rick Flair comes in here. He's going to wrestle the Southern Champion. What if the Southern Champion has a car wreck? The Mid-American Champion will probably take his place. It's like a card game. You've got to play your cards right. And I'm going to say one thing. Hey, we're friends, right? But yeah, I want friends. some satisfaction. I want a match. That's all I want. I just want a shot at it, baby. Well, I'll tell you what you do, Dutch. When you go back and talk to Eddie Marlin, when he says, Bill, sign your name here. Will and you sign it? Gonna, I'll sign it. You'll sign it. That's right. But not until he does the thing. Oh, wait a minute. Well, come on, Dutch. The ladder is nine feet tall, brother. You were no, up the I don't, I don't Now think you're down right. the bottom. You never no, beat Kern. No Did trouble. He beat Kern? Now, let's not have any trouble out no, here. We're, Please, you We're not going to have any trouble. No, no, no. Uh, come on, Dutch. Dutch. Eddie. He just hauled off and hit him. He's standing there, and Dutch just hauled off and blasted him once. Dutch, there's no excuse when that's that kind of stuff out here. Jeez. No referee in the ring. Here he comes. Good night, Dave. I rang it. Dutch slams the invader. Dutch mad. He's got to cover one, two. It's over. 14 seconds of time on it. Dutch wins it. 14 seconds. He beats the invader. Yeesh. Well, I'll tell you, you know, I can appreciate intensity, but eh, I don't know. Well, we're going to take time out. We'll be back in a minute. Well, we're back at it, Dave. I guess you'll just have to go ahead and do it while they're fighting. Yeah, they came in there as uh, Terry Taylor and Bobby Fulton hit the ring. Carl Fergie and Sweet Brown Sugar went after them. Stay on them, baby. Stay on them. I ran it. The bell has been rung. We are underway. As everybody came into the studio, they hit that ring running. And all four of them in there. Carl 
Paul Fergie working on Terry Taylor. Brown Sugar against Bobby Fulton. About 40 seconds into this ball. Expiration of time match here. Fulton, oh, look out. Hard in there. The referee at that point calls for the bell to be rung as Hart jumps in with a stick. And a strange start to this match. As is its ending, a disqualification. All four wrestlers in there all the way. And then when Hart jumped in with a stick, that was it. The referee has disqualified Carl Fergie and Sweet Brown Sugar. We're going to take a break. We'll be back. Expiration of time, I actually didn't have much time by the time I got through listening to the uh, world heavyweight champ, Ric Flair, and a few other things that happened. A little spontaneous scrap on the floor with Mantell and Dundee and all. So I, I've just about recapped uh, it. Almost, <laughs> yeah. We had Ric Flair in here. Rick, uh, in a special world championship match against Jerry the King Lawler for 10 minutes. There was no winner in that. Flair demanded another five minutes, grabbed the belt, and left. He still has the belt. Dutch Mantell defeated the Invader. Terry Taylor and Bobby Fulton will be the winners in the expiration of time. Well, Dave Brown, this is Lance Russell saying bye-bye, everybody. The announcers on this program are selected and paid by parties other than this station, namely the promoters of championship wrestling. coming up here in the ring and uh we'd like to get it on a match where where i don't see a match anywhere you know you. I, I can't believe it man you know the people right now are on the verge of dozing and they're on the verge right now of falling complete asleep I, I i can't believe this whole show out here today man right fergie you know i, I just want to say something you know like everybody out here knows hey i know it and i'm sure carl you know it too don't you carl and uh, dave and you uh, that water is probably the world's greatest wrestler isn't he, isn't he the greatest greatest in the world <laughs> See, the people know it, and, you know, and, and I just thought, you know, there's so many shut-ins all over around looking at TV and people in, in the children's hospitals that, that they probably would like to see the king wrestle somebody, and no disrespect to Jesse Owens, but he shouldn't even be in wrestling tights out here. He couldn't even beat a donut, man. He couldn't beat a donut, you know that. And, and, and I just thought, hey, king, listen, I know you're real busy, and, and, and I've got a lot of things to do, but can you come down here and talk to me just for a minute? Please. Hey, I'll even put my, I'll put my stick back over here. Look, behind the desk. Please come down here. Come on, I know you're a busy man, but you're great. You're the Southern champion, man. Come on. Come on, let's hear it for him. Come on. There you go. Come on. Yeah, come on, King. What is this that Jimmy Hart has got in mind? Nothing, nothing. Oh, there he comes. Oh, I see. Come here. You just want to have a pleasant conversation oh, right hey. before a match here. Hey, man, this... Hey. <laughs> You know, it's a thrill to even stand this close to you, man. You know, you got the Southern belt, and you are the greatest wrestler in the world. You know it, I know it, and the people know you're the greatest in the world. And and, and, and I was just thinking, see, there's a little applause right there. You know, I, I was just thinking, you know, like like I said earlier, there's so many people that are in all the hospitals, and, you know, it'd be such a waste of time to see you wrestle poor little Jesse Owens up there. You know, like I said, he probably couldn't beat a donut or anything else. But what I wanted to ask you is that, that you know, you came out last week, and you made a complete fool out of the world champion, Ric Flair. You know, he, he was stumbling over words, and, and, and it was great, man. He was so scared, he even ran to me and said, here is $10,000. Got a bounty on him, man. Can you bring anybody in to get it? Well, I've been on the phone all week. All week, I've been calling everybody, everywhere. And I said, man, I've got 10 grand here. You got to get rid of somebody for me. And they said, who? And I said, Jerry Lawler. They said, well, I'm sorry. We, we got to play golf or baseball or go on tours. And... And I was wondering that, you know, old Carl right here, you know, old Carl Fergie here, he does have a, a shot at the championship belt, my king, you know that. And uh, what I was thinking, instead of waiting, uh, you know, to next week or so, why don't we do it today in front of all these people right here, all these people, and all the shut-ins? Think about all the kids in the children's hospital, king. What do you think, man? Come on. What do you think, baby? Because you are the greatest. You know that. I know that, and the people know it. What do you think, huh? Little Southern Championship match right here. Sound today. familiar? What do you want, huh? <laughs> uh, 
Well, you know what I think is, Lance, that this guy would love to be just like me, wouldn't he? He oh, must. I he like must. Oh, yes, yes. You really are. Let's face it, Hart. You're my biggest fan, aren't you? Oh, hey, huh? number one, number one, baby. Right. You're the greatest. That's you're right. the greatest. See, because he obviously, he obviously sat last week glued to his television set, and now he's out here, he's memorized my little con job last week, word for word, hadn't he? And you think you're going to use that on me now? You think I'm going to fall for it just like Ric Flair fell for it last week? Is that, is that what you're doing man, now? listen, I have a picture of you in my bedroom, man. I have you made. Yeah. I watch your films on TV that. every week, man. I believe that. Uh, it's true. It's the truth, baby. Uh, so what you're proposing is that, now, you, one, one thing you said is true. Carl does have a shot at the Southern Heavyweight Championship, which he rightfully won. That's right. But now you see, I'm going to tell you something a little bit, a little bit about Carl. He and I are cousins, first cousins. His father, my mother, brothers and sisters. Right. But now, Carl, you know this is true. When we were young, Carl's mind sometimes comes and goes, you know. <laughs> and obviously, no, come on. Obviously, it's gone right now, or he wouldn't be standing next to Jimmy Hart. So. What I propose to you, Carl, what, what I, I'll make my own little proposal. You earned a shot at this belt, and I'll be more than glad to give it to you right here today if you'll remember that you and I are cousins, and you tell this little skinny wimp to get his little skinny tail back in that dressing room, then you and I can go in this ring and we can wrestle in the true sense of competition. And I think we'd both enjoy the match and we'll just see who the best man is. That, I would enjoy that, really, to be honest with you. I don't want, you see, I don't want, I don't want to, I don't want to fight Carl, but I'd love to wrestle. We wrestled when we were kids, you know, and I would love to wrestle. I, wrestling, to me, Lance, is fun. Fighting is not so fun, but I would love to wrestle Carl, but I don't want to have to fight him, and I'll be glad to wrestle you, Carl, if you get rid of this wimp right there. All right, now what about it? Well, I'll tell you what about it right now. I do Carl's talking for him, and let me tell you something. I need to get a hank just to start crying after that. Man, he's, Carl, he's trying to con you, man. Do you realize you are being conned by the greatest con man in professional wrestling today? He conned the world champion into a championship match, didn't he? Didn't he? Okay, well, look, man, he's jealous of you. You are you're jealous of him. You've always been jealous of anybody in your family, and you know that because you want to keep them at the very bottom so you can always be the king. Look at this man. Look at this man right here, baby. Six foot three, man. He is you. He is the future. That's what he's trying to do, Carl. Are you going to listen to him, man? Are you gonna, if you are, then you are. You're everything he said, man. You're nothing. But you can't listen, baby. You're our championship material, and you have a title for the championship now, huh? Another con? Hey, Maybe a con man all the way, Lauder. Why don't you do your talking in the ring? Because that's where he's going to do his talking. What do you think, huh? What do you think, baby? Huh? Well, I listen to this. I know he's already said that if you'd get on back out there, that he would go up in the ring and, uh, and wrestle Carl and have a wrestling match out of it and not try to make okay. it some kind of street just, fight. I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll just give Carl his championship match right here on television today. And what I think I'll do, Carl, is I'll give you a little wrestling lesson, and I'll show you that you're in the wrong company with this clown right here, buddy. <laughs> you're gonna uh, oh, King, let's go put to the, the belt ring, up baby. in a Come match on, with in Carl the now. In the ring, big man. Come on, Carl. Come on. Okay. This is, chance that this is his one chance at the belt that he earned. He's not gonna get another one. He doesn't need another one, baby. Come on, Carl. Come on. Well, Introducing a 227 pounds from Huntsville, Alabama, with his manager Jimmy Hart carrying the stick, beautiful Bobby Eaton. Going against him from Australia, 214 pounds, the superstar, Bill Dundee. This match, one fall, 15 minute time limit, Jerry Calhoun, the referee. Okay, we're about ready for the bell to go. Bell time, and here we go, Dundee and beautiful Bobby. I'm going to ask a friend of mine, Jimmy Cornett, to come in and sit down. Uh, I think many of you folks who've been around wrestling for quite some time uh, have seen Jimmy, and if you don't know him by name, uh, you certainly know him by seeing there with that camera. Jimmy is uh, one of the most prolific photographers in all of the wrestling world. He's had many, many stories and uh, items in wrestling news magazines. He uh, has been kind of the spark plug behind Championship Wrestling Magazine. And now, uh, Jimmy, as I said, I've known for a good many different years, uh, Jimmy, uh, Jimmy and his mother, and uh, they're at all of the matches. We see him around, and Jimmy has uh, told me that uh, he's got 
going to get into the wrestling business and the managerial end of it. And, uh, Jimmy, I think it's awfully interesting that uh, you are going to take that avenue of wrestling. Well, Lance, first of all, I appreciate the opportunity to come out here today, and uh, I always enjoy it, especially with the introductions you give me. And that's exactly right. I've made the statement around the area several times. I'll make it here again for the benefit of the people that don't know about it. All my life, I've loved professional wrestling. And uh, since I'm not big enough to be a wrestler myself, the only way I'll be directly involved is to be a manager. Now, you know, the word manager brings up a lot of negative connotations with people. They think of Jimmy Hart standing right over here and uh, Jim Dillon. And I don't want to be like that because, Lance, you see, like I've said before, I have an advantage. I come from a wealthy family. My mother has money. And I want to use this advantage to get into the wrestling profession. Well, um, I, you know, I think that's, that's fine, Jim. Let me ask you this. Uh, who do you like in terms of in terms of uh, wrestlers that you would like to try to sign up? Well, as I've said, since I'm investing my mother's money in this, and she said that I could do it if I wanted to, I don't want to invest in someone like Bobby Eaton, Sweet Brown Sugar, people like that. I don't want to invest my mother's money in trash, actually. What I'm looking for, and I've been talking to different wrestlers, including Jerry Lawler, Bill Dundee, Steve Kern, Stan Lane, anyone that I think I could get along with personally as well as professionally, because I want someone with some class and... Uh, Hearts me don't have it. Well, then, as I understand it, you will be in competition with Jimmy Hart. You won't be on the same side as the first family. Well, I sincerely hope it won't be competition because I don't want him to be any competition to me. I'd like to run him completely out of this area along with anyone else. J.J. Dillon, whatever. In the ring, Bill Dundee and beautiful Bobby. You know the guy's a loud man. Yes. I don't think anybody would argue with you that. Uh, Bill Dundee and, and beautiful Bobby in action up there as we are sitting talking with Jimmy Cornette who, um, well, let me ask you, have you gotten into any serious negotiations yet? Are you close to signing anybody, uh, uh, Jimmy? I've been talking to a lot of people. I don't really know whether I should call any negotiations serious yet or not. Uh, oh, put on a rope, pardon me, just a moment in yeah. there as the uh, Bill Dundee got a two count on him. But Billy was pretty well at home as he had that foot up there on the rope. Beautiful Bobby now with that right hand clobbering away. And the referee calls for a break, gets one right back to the throat. And a referee is going to get another break in here, Jimmy. Dundee's a fantastic wrestler. There's almost no way to beat him. You can't keep his shoulders down. But uh, as I was saying before, I don't want to call any negotiations serious yet because I want to keep all options open. But what I've done is I've contacted a number of people that have been in the, in the sport for quite some time in an advisorial capacity, to be an advisor, trainer, whatever, because there's a lot of that kind of business. I don't know about the business dealings contract. I know the sport. The, uh, the business negotiations is what I'm going to have to learn about. Well, I uh, would say this to anybody who's getting into a, a different new kind of business. I certainly am not telling you what to do, but you want to be careful when you invest your mother's money in, into buying talent in there. Uh, so you'll need to know a lot about it, I think. I Jimmy. definitely want to be careful, but as I've said, I've loved professional wrestling all my life, and this is my dream to be directly involved. And as such, uh, since I've followed it this long and studied it, I know at least the uh, the professional side of most of the wrestlers currently active in the country. I've just got to find out about the personal side, because I've said I want someone class. I don't want to invest my mother's money foolishly. But uh, when I went to her and I said, Mama, I want to be a manager. This is what I want to do with my life. She said, whatever makes you happy because this is the only thing last in my life that i've not gotten that i wanted and now i'm going to have this too with her help well uh that's very fortunate jimmy bill dundee boy i'll tell you what he and he have had one of those classic fireball matches and we knew it jimmy look at that, look at that. Ring. now let me advise you one thing don't take up any of that uh oh here comes Sweet Brown Sugar. Now, no class. This is exactly what I was talking about. This is ridiculous. Disqualification will be against Beautiful Bobby, and the winner is going to be Bill Dundee by disqualification. But uh, Sugar comes in, jumps in with Bobby Eaton and Jimmy. Here comes Steve Kern. Okay, go run off, Jim. I mean, they're not going to bother you over here. It's, it's 
Stick around. I don't really want him to get close to me over here. There goes. Well, I'll tell you, they couldn't have had two better guys come out there, Steve Kern and, and Jerry Taylor. Steve, thank you for breaking up that carry also. Thank you very I much. something last day, the guy back there on hard side just got a cut in his body. You know, every time I've, since I've been here, I've seen guys jumping in, jumping in constantly. Paul Dundee asked us to watch this match because he's worried about somebody jumping his back. Well, I'm going to tell you something. I got a message for you, Hart, and I got a message for them two geeks that work for you. Anytime you want to jump in the ring, come on out here and jump in the ring with me and Taylor. Because we're ready, and I'll tell you something else. If you want to jump in on anybody's match, you just be watching behind your back. Because we're here, and every time you get an opportunity, you're going to see our faces. Because we're going to be jumping in right behind you. Steve Kern and uh, Terry Taylor uh, looking for those Southern Tag belts. And boy, let me tell you, they are prime. Two real physical specimens. And you saw Eaton and Sugar decide it was time to get it uh, to get it on and get out of here. So by golly, they did that. Uh, we, yeah, Jerry. Hey, appreciate you coming out yeah. too, Jerry, I and helping to. out there. It, it, Bill's fine and everything. I wanted to. Could you come around here for a second, Jimmy Cornett? I wanted to talk uh, for just a second with Jimmy Cornett, if we well, could. Well, we've been yeah. talking with Jimmy about his uh, about his career. Well, coming, you know, trying to get into now a lot of people don't know Jimmy Cornett yet, but uh, Jimmy has Jimmy's been around wrestling, as he says, for a long, long time, and uh, he takes he's probably the greatest Jimmy, you're probably the greatest wrestling photographer that I've ever seen. And uh, uh, I know, uh, you know, I, I get a lot of pictures from you. I have a whole room, the entire room is wallpapered with my pictures that Jimmy Cornette has, has taken. And uh, he's got money. You know, he's talking about money, I know, because he charges enough for those pictures, <laughs> believe me. So. But, uh, and his mother, you talked about your mother. I heard you talking about your mother. That's really nice. I, you know, it's really nice when a guy feels that way about his mother, that he would come out here in front of, thousands of people and talk about it like that. his mother is loaded Lance she is rich she is so rich she's got alligator bags under her eyes that's how much money she's got I want to take well, yeah. it's kind of a uh, He's low term Jerry no, well, I'm, I'm, I'm not I'm only kidding about that but she is she's a fine lady and she really Jimmy and her are real close and and uh, I understand that she is gonna finance your endeavor and, uh, That's what Jimmy was telling us. Well, that is wonderful. It, does she also b pick out your clothes and everything for you, Jimmy? Well, <laughs> I, no, yeah, she, I, no she, I want, I'm just No, kinda, she helped me. She helped I'm me with this. I'm just kind of kidding with Jimmy. I know, I, I know she helped you. I can tell she helped you because I looked at the outfit, and I just, the first thing that is a dead giveaway, I want the camera, if you can, to kind of get down low. You remember, Lance, when you were a kid, little kid, and you used to, your mother say, okay, time to go to the shoe store, and you'd say, my, all the kids got Nikes or tennis shoes. I want some tennis shoes, but no, your mother would always buy you a pair of shoes like this. Look at this. Oh, you remember those dress Jerry, shoes? you're <laughs> terrible. You, did you get a shot of the shoes? Uh, Come on, just real quick. You like? You're... Have they got a shot of them yet? There you go. All right. <laughs> those Jerry, are typically bought mother awful. dress shoes, and the boxer shorts. Does she buy you the boxer shorts well, and all I've that stuff? I've got a couple of pairs, but. No. <laughs> okay. No, he's, no, he's here, a good come guy. On. Now you're, are, are you making fun let, of let me? No, I'm not no, making fun of you. Let, let, let me let me get get back into something. I know you're a particularly good friend of uh, Jimmy's, and uh, that's um, true. I, what, the reason I want to come out, I'm I'm just kind of teasing with him a little bit. Uh, I think a lot of people, because he says he wants to be a manager, got the wrong impression about Jimmy. Jimmy is a fine uh, young man. How old are you, Jimmy? He is. I'm, I'm 20. He's 20 years old, and he's, his mother is taking good care of him up till now. He Jerry, gets sick. I okay. <laughs> he gets something wrong with him, you know, she coddles him, pampers. You the are incorrigible. Are a little bit that's too much, you though, Jimmy, but <laughs> that's okay. No, no, Everything's no. fine. Let me ask you this. Now, how about signing? He's a good friend of yours. Jimmy's ready to go. He's expressed an interest in it. He's, I know he's talked to you and mentioned something to you about it. Uh, so no, he being talk to me about <laughs> about signing up with. Him. Well, like I said, Jimmy is a fine young man, and I'm sure that uh, he and his mother probably know a lot about wrestling from taking pictures and everything. But I haven't had that good luck lately with managers, so probably Jimmy, if you look, you know, find somebody else, would be be yeah, good. Well, there's would, a lot of guys with I would kind pay, of money you got. I would pay any price for you because you are the best. I've been a fan of yours for a long time. You know that. 
Okay, but I'll I pass on that offer. I appreciate okay. it anyway, Jimmy. Thank okay. you. Anyway, I just wanted to come out and have a little fun okay. with you. Okay, thank you, Jimmy. Thank you, Jerry, thank you, for Jimmy. being out here. Well, and uh, nice. you, you got, you got. <laughs> Will you get out of here? Uh, we're gonna, Jimmy, thanks for coming out. Best of luck in uh, however it goes, buddy. We got to take time out, and we're going to be back in just a moment. Well, uh, Jimmy Hart is uh, purportedly, well, here he comes right now. We had talked to Hart about his association with Kamala, and sure enough, here comes Jimmy with a big Ugandan giant. And here he is, Jimmy Hart. You, living in living and color. Kamala. What Jimmy Hart true. wants, Jimmy Hart gets, man. You know what? I really realized the man was mistreated. Can you imagine? This man, Kamala, the Ugandan giant, has never, ever tasted a watermelon in his life. He don't even know what a watermelon tastes like or looks like. Can you imagine priming this giant of that? Can you imagine? Kamala has never even been with a woman in the United States. He hadn't even partied with any girls or anything. And you know the parties the first family has, Russell. Can't yeah. you imagine? Kamala, a big watermelon party with Kamala and all those pretty little girls in a big party. This man will go crazy. Watermelons and women, Kamala. Woo! Well, My I'm champion. Still Can you waiting imagine to that? find out. I'm kind of getting the gist, well, gist of it here. Well, to how you got Kamala. Well, I'll tell you later, but let me just say something right now. What I want to talk about is to you, Dutch Mantell. Now, Dutch, I want you to pay attention. If he's not looking in the back, somebody please get him back there because this is important, baby. When Dutch Mantell was in the family, Dutch had the Southern Bell and the Mid-America Bell. Am I right or wrong? That's true. And he was my first lieutenant when I had the family back then when Dutch was with us. But then Dutch, he went and started talking to Laura and Dundee and all these people, and they swayed him over, and they said, man, you don't need to be with Jimmy Hart because Jimmy Hart will cheat you. He is no good. But now, where's Dutch Mantell? He is in Never Never Land. He don't have no belt. All he's got is that old whip of his. So what I'm trying to say, Dutch, is you need to be in the family, baby. I'll tell you exactly what happened. Listen, think about it, Dutch. Now think, why in the world are you fighting Kamala on TV today? Do you have a championship match with him? You don't. Well, let me tell you why. The exact reason why everything's like it is now, baby. Eddie Marlin and Dundee are just like that. Just like that. They live close to each other. Matter of fact, Dundee, cuts Eddie Marlin's grass, he polishes his car, he goes over to Eddie Marlin and says how pretty that big old pimply face, ugly wife of his looks. He goes, oh, she looks so thin, she's so gorgeous. You know what I'm saying? And I could just see him out there now polishing, polishing Eddie Marlin's car, polishing around, and he said, you know, Eddie, come here, Eddie. You know, Eddie's hard of hearing, so we had to call him way over to him and said, Eddie, listen, man, I've just been thinking, a matter of fact, I love his car, but you know, I've been thinking that Dutch Mantell, boy, he, he is pretty tough, you know, and it's a rough match. And I ain't scared of him now, but, but I just thought, why don't you maybe put him and Kamala on TV, and maybe Kamala might hurt Dutch, and then when I fight Dutch this week, Dutch, man, he won't even be able to get in the ring me. What do you think, Eddie? And old Eddie, kind of being senile in the first place, right, fell right into it. So that's why that match is here, Dutch, because Dundee got to Eddie Marlin, baby. So I'm giving you a chance. You're a smart man, brother. You're a smart man. You need to be with Jimmy Hart in the first family. If you come with me, baby, look, I've got Kamala. Look at it. Eating in sugar. I've got the world at my feet, man. We have got youth. We are the future. So, Dutch, be a smart man, baby. Smart enough. Jimmy, get on the right side. I don't, a match I don't care what you did or who you're talking to. Evidently, you don't. I don't have Dutch, to listen to Dutch, it, come out here, no. baby. Come on, We're going to get the match underway, Jimmy. I don't want to hear it. Will you stop trying to monkey up the show and just get on up there monkey and get a match? The show? Dutch this Van thing's been so dull in the first place when I came out here. Yeah, Come on, boy. Dutch, think about it, baby. You've got a match. You're going to get hurt, brother. All right. You got All it. right. I knew he was a smart man. Well, he's got a match coming up there. With him. Super. Super. We got the match coming up, Jimmy, so just leave it alone. <laughs> you know, Hart, a lot of people trying to sign me. Jimmy Cornette's trying to sign me. You're trying to sign me. But I'm a free agent, Hart. I'm my own man. And you're not a smart, you're not a dumb man. You're a very smart man. But I'm going to say one thing, Hart. I wouldn't sign with you if you were the last man on earth. I would not sign with you because I was with you one time and you, I got screwed around, right or not. And I don't have nothing to do with it. But you are right about one thing. There's no need me to wrestle Kamala today because no belts are up, nothing can be accomplished. So he's right about one thing. I'm not wrestling Kamala. 
Hey, come on, Dutch. Now, you listen to this jerk right here. Come on back. You got a match scheduled in it. Where did you jerk? Somebody get Eddie, will you? Come on, Dutch. You got a match scheduled. I can't believe it. Dude, I gave him the chance of a lifetime, man. Oh, Big Mouth. Mouth. Don't call me Big Mouth, Big Nose. What do you want to say that for, we man? We had a match lined up in here with Dutch Mantel and Kamala, and now uh, Dutch. Can we get Eddie right, out here? Dutch, you can stay in the Stone Age, baby. You can be with a new wave, but that's the last time I ask him to do something. Eddie. Oh. Dutch went walking out and said he's not going to wrestle. I can't imagine him backing out of the mat, but I'll deal with him later. But Jerry Lawler has agreed to take his place, so we can still have a match. Let me just say a few words here to you, Mr. Hart, you little stinking slimy wimp, and listen up. Now, you can run all over the country, and you can tell everybody that you won that belt for me, but you, and you couldn't beat your way out of a wet paper bag, punk. I'm the one that beat that big you bangy. And I did it then, and I can do it any day of the week. Do you understand that? Now, I'll tell you what I'm fixing to do, Hart. I'm fixing to show you, so you just take those little dark glasses off, get those little beady eyes of yours trained on that ring, because I'm fixing to take that big black jerk, and I'm going to beat that paint off his face, and then I'm going to wet his lips, and I'm going to stick him to that wall right over there, and then, Hart, I'm going to take you, and I'm going to do the same thing to you. Do you understand that? Okay. Well, the match is getting a Dave, I guess we got to change in it. All right. This is no bad uh, substitution in here as the... Uh, uh, match is underway very quickly. No introductions really needed. Lawler out of Memphis, of course, with 228 pounds. Kamala, 380 out of Uganda. It is a one-fall match, 15 minutes to time. Lawler not even in his wrestling attire. Sugar battling on the floor while Kamala works on Lawler in the ring. Sugar out. Kamala up there with that spear. Holding uh, Terry Taylor and Steve Kern. Stored as Hart starts out as Terry Taylor and Steve Kern are helping Jerry Lawler out of there. Uh, well, it'd have to be a disqualification, but in, in typical Hart fashion, once again, the uh, first family interrupts a match and jumps into the ring, Dave. Let's take time out and see if we can um, get some order restored completely. We've got other big action coming up, and we'll be back to it in a moment. <laughs> to keep Sugar and Eaton from jumping into the ring is to put them in the ring, and that's exactly what we're going to do on videotape. This one you got to see. Uh, it is a bout that took place between Steve Kern and Terry Taylor, a really outstanding tag team out of Florida, going against the champion Sweet Brown Sugar and beautiful Bobby Eaton. Let's take a look at it. In the corner, you can do it. forearm. I mean, yes. He really pounded Bobby Eaton in the 
corner. Terry from Vero Beach, Florida, California, Florida. Is eaten as he went over the ropes on the leapfrog, went over to the ropes. Steve dramatically showing he was touching the corner, but he still was able to hit him with that forearm. Sugar holds up. And Terry Taylor drop kicks him into Kern, and Kern still gets him with the forearm. Hangs on to a side headlock with beautiful Bobby. Over the top comes. And as Eaton was going to pull a similar trick that Taylor pulled, Terry slipped out of the way. Eaton in the wrong corner had his hand up to tag, and Steve Kern, Kern did the tagging but right on the button. Shoots a right, takes a forearm. Whip into the corner. Kern. Monkey flip as he tagged Terry Taylor on the way down. Beautiful drop kick. Sugar runs into Eaton. Taylor, another monkey flip. And Kern and Terry Taylor looking very hot. Whips around, going for the abdominal stretch. Can't get a good hook on. Beautiful Bobby. Jimmy Hart jumped up on the ring apron while the referee was separating Sugar and Kern. He nailed Taylor in the back. And now Sugar takes a tag and tags back out to Eaton. You see, Hart figured it was worth the gamble to do the damage on Taylor. If he got disqualified, they still keep the belt. Beautiful Bobby now. Going after Terry Taylor. slam by beautiful Bobby and Taylor down underneath the ropes is picked up by sweet brown sugar sugar whips him in big clothesline and boy did he string him out wow sugar chin locks him sits down on the spine and Steve Kern comes in kicks him right out of there and a half minutes in and Steve Kern trying to give Terry a little pep talk over there. Taylor puts a foot in the midsection to Eaton but Sugar headbutts him from outside the ropes. And beautiful Bobby a knee to the midsection tag on Sugar. Double T and Eaton is shoot out of there by the referee, but he doesn't go and drops an elbow and a leg from Sugar. Steve Kern gets him out of there. Another big elbow from Sugar. Tag on Eaton. Benefit of tag, clubbing away, and there goes Taylor over the top rope while the referee was in between Kern and Eaton. At the 10 minute mark, Terry Taylor blistered and put down on the bat where Eaton and Sugar double teaming again.
Sugar, man, you can hear that right hand popping, Terry Taylor. Taylor swinging back. Sugar goes under it and comes back in again himself. Taylor taking quite a pounding. Double team. Sugar out. Eaton stays in. Tag on Steve Kern, the referee arguing with Sugar. He probably didn't see it. That's what I thought. With Taylor being held, Sugar comes off the top rope or the second rope. Steve Kern being run out by referee Paul Morton, who did not see the tag. He was busily engaged with Sugar. Taylor trying to fight his way back up. Shoulder and Taylor may go to the well one too many times. He does a sunset flip, but Sugar right down on top of him knocks him off as Jimmy Hart had the referee looking away. Terry and a small package. And the referee runs Sugar back out of there. it up to Sugar legally this time. Approaching the 14-minute mark in action. Taylor now going for the corner, and there's a tag on Steve Curran, but Bobby Eaton started through the rope. The referee was keeping him out again. He did not see Steve Curran. About to have a piece of the referee. That's the second time he's tagged, but the referee's missed it. And Steve just says to heck with it and comes after Sugar and Eaton. He pulls. That's going to be a disqualification. Fourteen minutes, twenty-three seconds. The winners and still champions are. Sweet Brown Sugar and beautiful Bobby Eaton. Disqualification 1423. Boy, was that a stem winder and a half, man. I gotta tell you. Sometimes I like that disqualification rule, and other times I don't like the disqualification in various things. You worked it out in great hey, shape, boy. Jimmy wanted me to call you over here. Uh, he was out with us watching the match, and Aaron had some very kind things to say, as a matter of fact, during uh, during the uh, particular. Okay, Jimmy. Bill, I want to make an announcement. You know what I've been doing the past couple of weeks? I've been going around, I've been scouting talent, and I've tried to find somebody that I want to manage. And after last week, I think you saw what happened. You were probably watching on the monitor or something. Jerry Lawler insulted me. And so I've been narrowing my list down just a little bit, and he, at my top choice, was crossed off the list. And so what I want to do right now... So what you're telling me I is... Want, I was your second choice, right? Well, no, what I, what I want to do is I want to make my first public offer. I want to make my first public offer. I want to offer you the chance to be managed by me. You, you couldn't hear what I was saying over here. I can no. make you... He ain't making can... his first public offer. What you're making is your second public offer, so I'm just going to tell you something, Jimbo. No. I don't like being second to nobody and nothing. Jerry was obviously your first choice, so you just go back and talk to the king and see what he's going to say about it. No, he ins... Uh, Bill, he insulted me. I don't... Well... No, I'm making my first public offer. I want to manage, Bill Dundee. Bill, come here. Well, apparently... I can spend any amount of money I can make you a star. Oh, no. Now, I don't want him to insult me again, Lance. Well, Jimmy... Jerry. That's a big one, Lance. That's a big one. I'm coming to you, Elizabeth. I'll be the one with no contract in my hand. Uh, Lance, I don't want him out here getting insulted. Do you mean that I didn't get the contract offer, Jimmy? Now, let me tell you something, Jerry. You came out here last week. You made fun of my shoes. You made fun of my clothes. This man has... I thought you had class, but you don't. Oh, Jimmy. You now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Now, Calm down. Class. Calm down a little bit, Jimmy. Now, don't get so excited out here. I didn't make fun... <laughs> wait a minute. Now, Lance, he's now, wait a minute. Lance, fill of this suit. 
Did your mother dress you this morning? This is a heavy wool suit. It must be 90 degrees outside. She put you in a winter suit today like this. Now, if you, don't, if you want some respect, come down here and act like an intelligent human being. Don't come down here like a little wimp like this and let your mother dress you. You don't have any class. You wouldn't come out here. comes out here talking about his mother. That's a big joke, man. Don't come out here like a little kid. If you're going to be like a man, don't come out here talking about your rich mother and all of this stuff. Is that right or not? Come on. We don't want to hear it, man. Now, wait a minute. Now, Lance, I come out here and I try to do something serious. I'm being serious. At first, he comes out here. He makes fun of my shoes. He makes fun of my clothes. Well, don't and don't Dundee. Now, don't Dundee. I make this man a public offer. I can get him some publicity. I can do something for you. You don't realize what I can do for you. I've got oh, access yeah. to as much money as I want. He, has a, he isn't going to get the chance, but you are. If you want to take it, but you turn me down. I'm just, I'm Jimmy Cornette. I get what I want. I'm not used to being treated this way. I'm just, oh, wait, a minute. all right, you see him? You see this right here, Dundee? Come here, you see this? Oh, a little temper You see this? Laura, that was your name, Dundee? That's yours. I'm sick of being treated this way. I'm fed up with all of you. If you know what, I can do something. Well, our guest, uh... I believe you made him mad. Do you think you made him mad? I think he got mad at I think that was a classic temper know. tantrum, don't you? His mother will probably be upset. I'm oh, just... That's too you bad. guys are something. The king and the superstar. We're going to take time out, and we'll be back with Southern Tag information for you in just a moment. Oh. Bill Superstar D Dundee win it over uh, the big angel in mm -hmm. there. He had a tough battle indeed. We still got the king. You'll see him in action in the ring. In the ring, right. Yeah, and Kamala will be here, and Spike Huber and Steve Regal will be here a little bit later on. We talked uh, a little bit earlier and uh, hinted to the fact of Southern Tag action. By golly, I'll tell you, one of the outstanding matches. You've got a uh, couple of aggressive teams. And Sweet Brown Sugar and uh, beautiful Bobby Eaton that we'll see a little bit later on. They tangled with Steve Kern and Terry Taylor, a Florida couple of team. Florida representatives. You got to see the highlights of this Southern Tag Title match. Take a look. Sugar hammered into Steve Kern's knee. Steve takes over. And he dumps it. Sugar right down in the middle of the ring, steps on his face.
Golly, I'll tell you, that was some kind of a win, too. Uh -huh. You're talking about rough men. When those four guys get in there against each other, really something else. So, so from New Orleans, 200 four pounds, the dream machine. And against him from Memphis, Tennessee, at 232 pounds, Jerry the King Lawler. This match one fall, 15 minute time limit. Jerry Calhoun, the referee. Jerry at his crown and his colorful cape. He's getting ready to shed it right now. The uh, Southern heavyweight title around his waist is not, of course, at stake. But anytime you step in the ring with a king, you're trying to make an impression, and that's exactly what the Dream Machine's going to be doing. Here we go. Bell time, Dave. Looking for a good match here. Dream Machine, of course, you know him. That's him. Going against the king. Non-title match. Jerry's AWA Southern Heavyweight Belt is not on the line in this match. But the dream machine, I imagine, will be wrestling like it is. Kamala will be coming up immediately following this match. Uh, Dave will have him in action, the big Ugandan. Lots of action still to come on championship wrestling. Dream machine. Wax Lawler into the corner. Oh, boy, he nailed him again with that right fist in the top of the head. That's twice he's gotten him in a corner and hit him with a fist. Dream, since he's peeled off about 35 pounds, he really is moving much faster than he ever did in there. And all are seeing a piece of it right now. The Dream heading straight at him. Feels him across the ring with an arm drag. The dream Machine starts yelling. He had his tight pull. He goes to the crowd when the crowd disagrees and says, yes, I did. Uh-oh, Dream Machine out of the ring. He's upset because the uh, crowd wouldn't back up his story to the referee. Now back in the ring. Lawler set near the corner. Dream Machine backs to the center of the ring. We're a minute 50 seconds into this one. One minute 50 seconds gone. It's a 15 minute time limit, right? Ooh, and a dream machine. Putting the heat on the wrist. Hey, dream, all right. Left arm of Jerry Lawler. Lawler, right fist double. It's a fly, Dream Machine. Knocked off his feet onto the mat, bounces up, backs to the corner. And Jerry Calhoun, the referee, warning Lawler about the fist after Dream Machine had used it twice earlier in the match. Back Lawler to the corner again. A whip and a reversal by Lawler. The Dream Machine bounces into the turnbuckles. Lawler goes in after him. Dream kicked it back. Drops down with the upper arm across the back of the neck. Boy, he blasted out of that corner. That's some of that speed we were talking about. Dream Machine got Lawler off his feet. Lawler hung onto the rope. Whoa, Lawler knocked over the top rope. He was not thrown over. Had he been thrown over, that would have been the disqualification. But he, his momentum carried him over after Dream Machine hit him. Down on the floor, referee Jerry Calhoun trying to get that stopped and get him back in the ring. Lawler heads back for the ring. And Lawler run into the ring post. <clears throat> now the Dream Machine back in the ring. Lawler under the ropes. Dream pulling his hair, picks him up. Fires him into the rope. Ooh. Elbow. Lawler picked up in the air and body slam by Dream Machine. 
Green bounces out of the corner, drops down a cover. One, two, and Lawler kicks out of it at the two count. Very close to a win there for the Dream Machine. Mm. Smacking those ears. Lawler back in the corner. Four and a half minutes gone. Four and a half minutes into the action and the Dream Machine firing that fist. First to left and then to right and Lawler. Comes out of the corner and he nails it. And again, the Dream Machine hits the mat, bounces up. Lawler with him in the air. Body slams him, says how about the fist? Crowd says yeah and he lets him have it. Referee Jerry Calhoun counting all the time, trying to get him off using that fist. Five minutes gone. Five minutes gone. Ten minutes left to wrestle. Dream machine. All are into the ropes. Jimmy Hart trips him. Hart came running in here and pulled all his feet out from under him. Dream machine with a cover. Two. Waller's got a foot on the rope. Yes, he does. And just in the nick of time. Dream Machine thinks he's won it. Lawler from behind drops him down. Got a three. Lawler gets the win. And boy, the Dream Machine is hot. Dream Machine got the two count on Lawler. Lawler put the foot on the rope. When the referee tapped Dream Machine on the back to say, hey, break it, the foot's on the rope. I think Dream thought he had won it at that point. He jumped up, arms raised in victory. Well, he just got that victory. Lawler slipped in behind him and dropped him down, held him for the three count. It's Lawler that gets the win in the match. Five minutes, 31 seconds of time. Kind of an interesting uh, situation. Lawler was fortunate that when he went down, hardcore stripped him right there at the rope, but that he was close enough to be able to get that leg up on the rope, because I don't believe he had enough in there to be able to kick that big dream off of All right. The WWA World Tag Team Champions have just stepped in the ring. Their opponents coming in here. This is a non-title match. Introducing at a total of 448 pounds from Union City, Tennessee, Sweet Brown Sugar about to step into the ring. And his partner from Huntsville, Alabama, beautiful Bobby Eaton, their manager Jimmy Hart. The World Tag Team Champions at a total weight of 458 pounds, both from Indianapolis, Indiana, Spike Huber and Steve Regal. This match to the expiration of time. The referee is Jerry Calhoun. And the conversation continues. Brown Sugar and Hart uh, talking to the crowd. Regal and Huber have uh, removed the World Tag title belt. And they're just kind of waiting for uh, Hart to sort out the, the corner over here. Looks like it's going to be Bobby Eaton starting against Steve Regal. Well, no, no, no title match, Bobby. It's uh, it's a match, but not the belts are not on the line. Bell sounds, and Bobby Eaton shakes hands with Brown Sugar, and then Hart and Steve Regal comes firing out of the ring. He headed for Hart. Now he's back in the ring. And maybe we're going to get some action underway here. Regal against Eaton. Watch this team of Steve Regal and Spike Huber as the match progresses. You know, we've said many times in order to be a championship caliber tag team, it does in fact take teamwork. One of the partners can't do it by themselves. And Regal and Huber really, really work.
work in championship fashion as a tag team. Eaton forces Regal back onto the rope. Nice shoulder by Regal coming off of there. Eaton set. Regal steps over. And as Eaton turns, Regal is there with a body slam. And Eaton just literally bounces off the mat. Regal takes him back down, bars the arm, Eaton back on his feet. Hair pulling by Bobby Eaton. But he got to the corner in the tag on Brown Sugar. Regal moving him around the ring, and Sugar then backs up a couple of paces, sets himself, and says, hey, you better watch it, Steve Regal. Bobby Eaton and Sweet Brown Sugar, former holders of the AWA Southern tag titles, well, which they recently lost to Steve Kern and Terry Taylor. Congratulations all around for something here between uh, Hart, Sugar, and Eaton. Meanwhile, Steve Regal waiting patiently in the center of the ring. Regal back to the rope. Whoa, Brown Sugar. Let's go with the right hand, and Regal ducks out of the way. And now it's Regal's turn to say, hey, I outsmarted you that time. Two and a half minutes gone, two and a half minutes gone in the first fall. This is an expiration of time match. Might be one fall, might be three or four. This depends on how much time we have remaining. Brown Sugar nailed by Steve Regal, and he complains about it, and the referee says, ah, you're the one that did that first, so I think we're back to even now, one apiece. He just explained exactly what happened. And, uh, Regal was just returning the favor uh, from earlier. Here's Spike Hubert. Spike against Bobby Eaton. Now, Eaton and Sugar starting uh, the complaining. Time is running short here. We uh, just noticed, uh, quick glance at the clock, we've got a little less than three minutes left in the time limit. Uh, just about three minutes from right now. Spike Huber against Bobby Eaton. Huber set. He rolls Eaton down to the mat. And again, he takes him down. And Eaton. Eaton heads for the corner for the tag on Brown Sugar. Now, what, did they make a tag, or is Eaton going to stay in there? Eaton's holding his back. Yeah, they made a tag. Here comes Sugar coming in. That's Spike Huber just waiting for it there. Well, there's a couple of blocky ones facing uh, each other in there right now. Huber and Sugar. Just thinking they're both about the same size, and they are both pretty doggone good shape. And Spike Huber is just set. He says, come on. Brown Sugar, a little cautious. Couple of minutes left in the time in this first fall. The flip by Spike Huber. Good drop kick as he follows up. Sugar stood up. I don't know if he was in the wrong, thought he was in the wrong corner or not, but he was. And he was sent across the way by Steve Regal and Spike Huber. Spike makes a tag. Steve Regal back in there now. Sugar, uh, Sugar has not made a tag on Eaton as yet. He's hanging back in the corner. And they do not go for the tag. Brown Sugar stays in there against Steve Regal. Minute left. One minute. We're down to 60 seconds to go in the action in there. And this very even match. Uh-oh. Well, Bob Hart was talking to Calhoun. Bam, Eaton hit him from the outside. Yeah. Bobby Eaton in there now. 
Whip speed across the ring, foot to the midsection. Time winding down, 15 seconds to go. There's a tag on Sweet Brown Sugar. Time is up. But the fighting continues. Dave, we're going to have to we're going to have to say we'll be back after we check the time in just a moment. 